There's a lot of talk about LED taking over, but HPS isn't quite dead yet. In this video, we're breaking down what really matters for your plants and your setup. But first, check this out. It's time to light it up. AC Infinity's Evo series. Every light in the series has a removable driver so you can keep the heat out of your grow space. And they are up on the Tech 3.1 for you moles per joule if you want to geek out. My favorite feature is the built-in timer on this. It has 10 brightness levels. You can do sunrise, sunset. It's right on the fixture. Super easy to use. No separate tab timers or any of that jazz. Check out AC Infinity's LEDs over at acinfinity.com. Coupon code DUDEGROWS will hook you up with these top-notch LEDs. They got a size for every grow tent. acinfinity.com. Coupon code DUDEGROWS will hook you up. Back to the show. All right, I almost feel like silly talking about HPS. It's old school, right? But our last DGC Cup, man, we had a couple growers that had dank, and they're like, well, I only get this from an HPS light on my flower. Like, look, it's super frosty, so... Hey, dude, before we even get started, we should let everyone know that LEDs are newer, that people have been growing since the 90s. Some of these strains have been growing since the 90s, and of course, they're going to look different. Things are definitely going to look different between LED and HPS. And some people, I think, just wax poetic about the olden days, no? Yeah, and I've heard growers say, hey, that, these strains do better under HPS. Because like you said, even some back to the 80s, people the first HPS lights, probably late 70s, and they never saw LED light. And that's why they grow better under HPS. But the botanist side of me, if I'm saying this. <laughs> I got another botanist side of dude. Hang on. It's, it doesn't, it sounds like bro science to me. Like it's gonna, so if we look at like, let's. Let's look at par and the spectrum, you know, because the LED offers like what's par here? That's that's the range that plants see. Yep. That's just this is a light spectrum right here. You can see it goes from blue on one side or violet on one side. Actually, on that that violet side, that's where you get your UV and all that. But it's outside of par. Par is what the plant sees to make photosynthesis, what it builds okay. itself with. So the more and take a look at red and yellow. That's the most efficient. That's the most efficient color that the plant can absorb. Blue's pretty good, but what's blue at 75? That bright yellow is at 100. So red is 100, or yellow rather, is 25% more efficient. You know, you're getting for every yeah. lumen or every photon of light, the plant's absorbing 25% more efficiently. <clears throat> the yellow and the red or the yellow orange, probably why HPSs are yellow. So, Grambo, throw up that other chart. So, check out the spectrum in this chart here. You see the HPS is the first spectrum that we're looking at on the lower end of it versus the third one back is LED. And that's like, there, there's no way a plant that the LED has so much more of the spectrum that you, what's up? Uh, I was going to say, start with sunlight. Look at sunlight. It's got a little bit <laughs> of everything. And then that LED would be your next best spectrum where. We talk about plants not needing as much green light. So it looks like they can tune the spectrum on the LEDs and went down on the green light, left the blue, which is going to keep your plant short and stocky with plenty of super energetic yellow there. And then, yeah, there you go, Grandpa. Look, that's L so LED. Look at HPS. Look at LED spectrum compared to HPS. We'll just yeah. leave that CFL out. Don't grow with CFLs. <laughs> wow, man, dude, it's all yellow. H HPS is just, you know, just uh, using the most efficient wavelength to just get as many photons uh, absorbed into that plant. So, A, it makes sense why it would grow big, fast plants. But, damn, it also makes sense why LED and things grown outdoor in the sun are different, doesn't it? Look at all that red in the sun. Yeah. 100%. And this is why it's, you know, I, other than the fact that some growers, and I've seen it, they've shown me bud growing under HPS versus their LED, that a strain that they've been working with for a while that they're probably competing with that they're pretty serious about still have some HPSs hung up. And if you take a look at uh, the LEDs, it's got a lot less of that, right? I kind of like that. That peak right there is the infrared, like the McDonald's heat lamps. That's just making heat. <laughs> it is. That's what infrared is. They're infrared lamps. They heat up things. It's, it's these light photons that heat up things. They don't heat up the air. And that's a big deal when the thing you're heating up is your leaf. 
You're changing your leaf surface well, temperature because you're bombing it with infrared. You're raising it two or three degrees. And that's where I believe the, you know, me and you came from the grow school of HPS lighting in flower. You have a higher leaf surface temperature. Therefore, you can have a cooler room temperature, like around upper 70s, 77. Um, and growers have that. Wait, great. I can, I can spend more on air conditioning. Awesome, man. <laughs> like growers kept that mentality sometimes when going to LED. I would deal with a lot of growers that was helping that coming into the LEDs that would be I do look in veg, uh, early flower, with everything balanced, you can bring your temps up to 82, 83. If you want to screw around with 80, 45 and everything's really dialed, you're gonna see exponential growth. You never did that um in an HPS growth. I mean, it would just not be as good. So I think there's been some grower error on, on how people run their environments with LEDs. They are the they are the future, they're here. I mean, they've been the future. The power saving, everything else, I can't see why I'd hang in HPS, except for heat. I know some growers that do need the heat. Uh, my garage grow, if I had HPSs, I run a heater at night now. So if I had HPSs out there, I mean, still lights on on at night, but it would be a bit better on my heat savings potentially, but otherwise, I don't know many reasons. Heat's not a, that expensive. If you're using gas heat or something like that, I don't think it's expensive to run as electric. Electric heat's pretty inefficient. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, when we think about these lights, the, the best HPS light, we talk about efficiency, micro moles per joule is how you measure efficiency, whatever. 1.6 is the number you get from a really good quality uh, HPS light. Three is the record now, or a little bit above three is the record for. Um, uh, LED lights. That's almost double. I'm going to call that double the amount of light photons that are coming out for the exact same amount of energy that is going in. So for every watt of energy, I can either get one photon or two photons. And by the way, it's not magic that, uh, it, that it, you're either getting one photon of light and then a bunch of heat when you have your HPS light. So I'd rather leave the heat and just get two photons of light. Last but not least with LEDs, they're still evolving. They are they are still evolving and offering more spectrums. This uh, Grandmaster LED I was checking out, and they have the, it's a typical, I don't want to say typical, most LEDs are a bar style like this now, very low profile, uh, great. They have uh, sizes for 4x4 TED, 5x5 TED, commercial grows. They're, forward, they're foldable when they're stored. So pretty cool set design. But what I really like about this area on the spectrum down here on the left, it comes with 12 spectrums programmed into it for different phases of growth, which is kind of cool. I got to learn more about this. Um, but obviously, if you go out, outside in nature, how this plant grows, the spectrum is not always the same. There's a different spectrum in the fall. Um, there's a different spectrum when the sun's straight above it in mid-veg. And I think this is kind of neat to see what we can do to mimic nature and get more quality out of our flowers. Yeah, I mean, there's a totally different spectrum for veg than there is for flower. You want to, or there, at least there could be. Ideally, you would want a bunch of blue light in veg to keep the plants really short and compact, and then up the yellows and reds as you go in the flower to let them stretch out, let those buds get all sorts of space for them to, for them to grow. Dude, I have not seen this. So this is Grandmaster level, is that right? This guy used to make content or does make content. Uh, respect, man. That's a nice looking light, bro. I mean, I had to learn. I mean, he's a grandmaster. That's which I was like, that's the highest level chess player officially. I did not know this. I'm learning. I love. I like the way that that light spread out because you get, uh, you know, it's it's all over your canopy. That thing over, you know, on a four by four tent or something like that. That would be the major reason why we're still seeing seeing LEDs in, uh, I'm sorry, HPSs in a lot of the commercial grows. We were just talking to Michigan Matt, and he was telling us that a lot of commercial grows still run HPS lights just because they, you know, the act of replacing them and the whole learning curve and all that and buying a quarter million dollars worth of lights, that's, uh, take, takes, that's a big move for a giant business that's in the middle of production, you know? Hold on, I got to change my spectrum to fall mode here. And then also while I'm at it, I'm going to up my, oh, I, the future is so cool for growing. Like you can almost yeah. grow from your phone, change your spectrums. Uh, but let us know in the comments, what are you guys doing? Is anybody listening, running to HID, HPS, metal halide for anything in their growth? Curious. I mean, it's completely dead. Let us know. And if you have know, any tunable LEDs out there, I'd like to see what, what you're running and what you're doing like. Uh, give us a comment. Let us know if we're right or wrong. 
and check out the other couple videos YouTube's recommended. And that's most important.